Brother Dominic is with us tonight in spite of the fact that he mm. vacationed to Bahamas this last time. Right. right. And uh, he says, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have any tan or anything. And I, I told him that he uses good sand, uh, sun, uh, sun tan lotion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there, it's real good. It's a real joy to have him with us on the night. Amen. And, uh, We'll try to do what we can to be a blessing to him financially as well. Because I know he spent so much money in the Bahamas <laughs> last week. Uh, but I'm sure he has something that he can preach to us on tonight. Yes, Let's give him a hearty amen as he comes. Amen. 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 Well, I'm thrilled that you're here tonight. Thank you for coming out on a, what is it, Sunday night? And I'm um, always good to be in church. When I was in the Bahamas, when like we say, good evening. They say, good night. They <laughs> come on saying good, they come up, you know, like they're about ready to say good night. I'm thinking, no, it's not time to go to bed yet. It, it was, but it really wasn't. And um, so we're not going to start that here or else we all go to sleep because we do that already. Well, anyway, And um, but I'm glad that you're here tonight. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Be sure that you're here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. You have to come straight from work and do that, but make sure that you come, be a part of the services this week. You can't get too much church. Right. Amen. Um, it's funny we never complain about getting too much television. Somebody help me out on that. Yeah. Right and, you know, the, the preacher schedules a couple extra preaching services. Oh, preacher, it's late. We well, stay until 10 o'clock watching television. Come on now. And um, so you're co let's come to church. Invite some people out. Invite some people out. There's other churches in the surrounding area that you can invite out. Let's have a great um, crowd the next couple of nights. Yeah. See Amen. what God can't do. And I think God will be pleased with that. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible. Turn to Proverbs chapter number 22. Proverbs chapter number 22. If you can, get me back to the volume you had it this morning. Because I like hearing myself. I'm my favorite preacher. Amen. <laughs> Proverbs chapter number 22. We're going to start reading in verse 6. Also, if you will, turn to John, John chapter 5. Hold your finger in John chapter 5. But I want to start reading in Proverbs chapter number 22. Once you have found it, let's all stand. As we read the word of God this evening, it says to Brother Donald, please enjoy these chocolate chip cookies. Amen. And um, I do appreciate that. I told the preacher he needs to share his. He, goes, he, he told me he'd share his two plates. Right. And um, so he's very kind of that. I appreciate the kindness that comes that I get from your pastor all the time. Amen. And uh, but anyway, Proverbs chapter number 22. I'm going to put these over there just in case I decide to hit the pulpit and I crush my cookies. And if I happen to pick those up, sorry, sort of preacher. And uh, but Proverbs chapter number 22 and verse 6. The scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right. Now, let me, let me, let me, if I can, let me tell you what I don't believe this verse is teaching. I don't believe that this verse is teaching that the parent whose child has gone wayward didn't train their child right. That's right. I don't believe that. I believe this verse, this, I, this is why I believe this verse is teaching. You train your child right. Yes, sir. They may go wayward, but they'll never get away from the teaching. Right. Right. It'll always gnaw at them. Right. I don't care what they do, it'll always know. I think this is, a, this is hope for the parent to just keep on doing right. That's right. That's good. Yeah. Because I've watched children, two children grow up in the same home, one go wayward and one not. So what's so did the did they do good with one or they do bad with the other? Did God in heaven do bad with one third of the angels? Well, Come on now. I'm afraid sometimes we look at a verse like this and if we're not careful, we become very critical of people. You know, it's always very easy to be critical when you don't have your own children yet. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody help me out right now. Yeah. Uh, always very easy. But when you have your child, all of a sudden you realize, man, hey, it's not as easy as I think it is. Uh -huh. um, but, but honestly, I, I believe, because I've, I've watched this time and time again, I've watched many a parent do right. And the child goes wayward. And that child, when they come back, said, I couldn't get away right. from my parents' teachings. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, if you will go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Just, just
just a little bit more. I, I'm not hearing myself, and I hate to have to come back here and beat you up. And, uh, but anyway, John chapter 5, verse 19, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verse 19, just in case you haven't found it, John 5, 19. The Son can do nothing of Himself. Notice what this phrase is, this next phrase is. But what He seeth the Father, what? Do. For, for what things soever He doeth, these also doeth the Son, Likewise, what a powerful verse. Right. Tonight, I, and I don't know why the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart to preach a sermon. But I, I want to give some help to some parents here tonight. But may I say this, I believe that this truth here would apply to, our, to the ministry of the children. And I'll even go a step further. I'm not, I don't, just because you don't have any children, you may not even be involved here. You, do, you might have grandchildren. I'll get to you at the end of the sermon, so don't check out while I'm preaching. Uh, because I, 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 the sermon's for everybody. If you listen, I want to help you. I want to speak to you this, this evening on the subject, In the Way. In the Way. Father, take these next few minutes. Lord, I, I want to be a help to your people. I don't know that any of us are going to ever be perfect parents because we're human. And I believe that every parent under my voice tries the best. But even at our best, we're still sinners. We still need your help. I thank you for thy book. I thank you for what your book teaches us. Now, Lord, let me help your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Several years ago, we had moved to West Virginia, and my daughter was just young at, 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 a, at a certain time, and, and I, I, gotta, I gotta remember Elizabeth, I need to tell you something my daughter wanted me to tell you, so I just, I, that just hit me, sorry about that. It's, a, it's one of those things, I'm starting to get to that, those gray hair days or something like that. You remember at the right time, you better say it now or you forget about it, amen? But I was driving down, I was driving my daughter to school. It was a, Early, you know, I say early morning, the sun was coming up over the mountains of West Virginia. And as they were coming over, the sun was right into our, into our eyes, so I reached up into my sun visor. I grabbed my sunglasses, and as I was grabbing my sunglasses, I, know, I noticed my daughter was reaching down to the side of the door to grab her sunglasses. I opened mine up, I watched her open hers up. I began to bring them up to her face, and out of the corner of my eyes, I saw her bring up to her face, and then something hit me. Hmm. I wonder. So I stopped halfway up, and then I put them back down my lap. I watched my daughter stop halfway up and put them back down in her lap. So then I waited for about 30 seconds, and I picked them up, and I brought them up but I was going to put them on. I watched her pick them up, bring them up like she's about ready to put them on, then I put them back down. I watched her put them back down. I then brought them up halfway. I watched her bring up halfway. Then I put it back down. She put it back. I did this for a little bit, just, just having a great time. And then finally, I, and, and she didn't know what I was doing, I, but I knew what I was doing. And finally, I put the glasses on my face, and I watched my daughter take her sunglasses and put them on her face. And as I was being humored, kind of playing around with my daughter a little bit, the Holy Spirit got involved. I always hate it when the Holy Spirit gets involved because it's going to be a bad day for Alan Donovan. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and the Holy Spirit said, if she is copying how you're putting your sunglasses on, uh -oh. Uh -oh. then what else is she copying? Yes, sir. And what became a humorous little illustration all of a sudden became a very convicting thought. Because if my daughter was willing to copy me in the smallest things of putting on sunglasses, then that means that she's watching a lot of the other areas. And I, let me be honest with you, I didn't know that she was copying me. I had no idea that she was doing that until one day I just it just kind of clicked. You know what I'm talking about. It just kind of clicked. 
And all of a sudden I realize, man, she's watching me. And you see, and a lot of times we don't understand what our children are watching us do. Right. And our children watch us do certain things. And all of a sudden they, you know, and we think, oh, my word, I can't believe this happened. But I'm saying tonight, I'm saying I saw that. And the Holy Spirit said, you better make sure that every other area of your life is right. I remember when I was a boy. We lived in Pueblo, Colorado, for a few years. My dad um, started a church there in Pueblo. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a cold, snowy morning. It snowed that night, so I rode. I was rode my dad to church. We had an old English Ford. Does anybody know what an English Ford is? Just want to see if anybody even knows what that is. But we had this old English Ford, and my dad, whenever every time he pressed in that clutch, it backfired. I mean, just boom. Boom! And I always had fun. I always thought it was kind of neat. And so I said, Dad, you know, we, in Sunday mornings, we go, my dad, would, I said, Dad, can we drive down the rich neighborhood and wake those people up for church? And so he would. And we'd be going down the street and he'd press in that cousin. Boom! Boom! And I was just having a good time with my dad. You know, and here we are. We're, we're doing this kind of stuff. But I remember it was a cold, snowy morning. And my, we got to the church, and my dad said, Son, why don't you stay inside the car? Let me go and lock the church, the church door, and then I'll come and get you. I was, I was a pretty small young man. I wasn't tall like people like Goliath are that are sinners. But anyway, I'm not trying to point anybody out over here. But anyway, um, but, but, I, but, but I, I, my dad, he came by. He, he opened my door. He began to walk back. And as I was a young boy, I remember, I began to put my feet. In my daddy's footsteps. Everywhere dad would step, I would step. Every footprint he made, I followed. You see, that's exactly what Jesus said he did with his father. Right. You notice in John 5 19, he says, The son can do nothing of what? Himself. But what? He seeth the Father do. He, say, he says, uh, he says, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Jesus was saying this. Jesus is saying, I watched how the Father loved people in heaven. So he says, I love people on earth the same way that the Father did in heaven. Right. He said, I watched how the Father hated sin up in heaven. So he says, when I came to earth, I hated sin the same way that the Father hated sin up in heaven. He said, I watched how the Father taught truths up in heaven. So I came down to earth and I taught parables down earth the same way that the Father does up in heaven. He said, I watched how the Father treated people up in heaven. So when I came to earth, I just treated people the same way that my Father did up in heaven. He said, I watched how joyful my Father was up in heaven. And he said, so when I came to earth, I just decided to just be a spreader of joy and be joyful on this earth. And he said, I simply copied everything that I saw my Father do Jesus said, I am a, a replica. I am simply a copy of what the Father is in heaven because as he set the example, I simply walked in his footsteps. Now listen carefully. Most of us are a replica of our parents, whether we like it or not. Yes, Come on now. Yes, you know that one thing that you hated about your parents? Come on now. You see it yourself, don't you? <laughs> Come on now. And that's probably why we're the hardest on our children in that area. Because it's something that we don't like about ourselves that we don't like to break that habit with our children. Yeah. But you see, whether you like it or not, you are a chip off your block. Ooh, that's right. And a lot of our habits... A lot of the things that we do is something that we learn from mom and dad. And I, all I'm saying is, you and I, as, as God's people, we've got to understand we are here. We're training some people. I, I think of the ministries right here. You have a good bus ministry right here. We're training these young people that come to the church. And they need to be trained in the right way. I'm, I'm looking at parents across this auditorium. You're good young parents. But you, we're, we're, we're training these young children. And they need to be trained the right way. Now, our text verse says in Proverbs, he says, train up a child in the way he should go. Right. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That word train carries several great definitions that apply to this verse. Follow me. Here are some of the definitions of the word train. The word train means this. It means to trace away. Or in other words, draw a line. In other words, parenting is this. 
when I'm training a child, I'm drawing a line for them to follow in life, and I'm saying, follow that line. Yes, sir. Yes. That's my job. Mm -hmm. Listen, in other words, I am not to be a correspondent parent that says, do as I don't do as I do, do as I say do. No, that's not what training is. Training is getting off your seat and saying, this is how we do it. Right. This is how we work. Right. This is how we go to church. This is how we serve the Lord. This is how we're joyful. This is how we're happy. This is how we this is how we're honest. This is how we overcome difficult situations. You trace a way for them to follow inside of life. The word train, I love this. The word train means to entice. When God says, train up a child in the way he should go, it may I paraphrase it and say, it's saying, entice a child in the way he should go. Listen to me. In other words, listen, I'm afraid too many parents are enticing their children towards the world That's right. and not towards the things of God. Right. We make the things of the world more exciting than the things of God. Listen to me. The most exciting thing that your children ought to do in life ought to be with serving the Lord. Yes, sir. Listen, I watch so many parents gripe, complain about the Christian life, and then they wonder why their children grow up yep. and want nothing to do with the Christian life. Right. Right. Come on now. Yes. My job is to what? Entice them. Yes. My job, okay, for illustration. I've got two Rottweilers in my house. You say, why do you have two Rottweilers in your house? Because my daughter's 16, about ready to turn 17. Yeah, and um, I, I realize there are males that are going to be going after her. Now, let me tell you something right now. You say, what have you done? I've trained them to hate teenage boys. <laughs> they get fed a chicken thigh every day. You, you know what that chicken thigh is called? Teenage boy. <laughs> I'm going to come to my house. Anyway, uh, listen, you might want to borrow those. But anyway, listen to me. Listen, you know, I, you know, you know what I do a lot of times when, I'm, when I was training them, when they were going through the training stage, I would entice them. I would entice them so that I could get, get this now, so I could get engagement with them. You say, what's engagement? They're looking at me. I get a, I, I, I chop up hot dogs. And, uh, you know, and that's always the, it's amazing how food is gets the dog's attention. And I get that, and I let them sniff, and all of a sudden it wakes up the sniffer, and their nose is going everywhere, and they're, and they're being enticed, and I'm enticing them in the way that I want them to go. Listen to me. Likewise, you and I are to entice the younger generation in the way they should go. Yes, sir. I should say, okay, I'm going to train you. I'm going to entice you to come this way. Because I can literally get that hot dog, and I can go like this, and that dog would follow my hand no matter where I took it, because it wanted what I had. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. When God says, train up a child, he says, trace away. When he says, train up a child, he says, entice them. When he says, train up a child, it means to exercise them in the way of the Lord. In other words, you see them, do, you watch them do it over and over again. Get this, the word, tra the word train means to, means to teach by practice. The word train, get this, means to, means to direct their energy. Amen. Listen. I do not believe in breaking children. I believe in directing what God gave them. Amen. 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 Yes. Listen, stubbornness is not bad as long as it's directed. Yes. Yes. Amen. I want somebody to be stubborn towards the world. Yes. Come on now, so help me out a little bit. Amen. I want someone to have. Listen, I, okay, anger is not bad as long as it's directed. You see, my job, listen, God made your children the way that he, everything inside of them, God gave them. Yeah. My job as a parent is to find out, okay, how does the Bible want this directed? Yes, sir. And it's my job as a parent to direct it and to correct it when they're not too, I'm, I'm going go in the right direction with what God gave them to do. That's my job. Amen. Amen. I'll go step further. The word train means this. I love this. It means to mine out the gold. You know, in every young person, there's gold. That's right. There's gold. Hey, there's gold in 
in that young man. There's gold in that young man. Come on now. Hey, there's gold in that young girl. Hey, there's gold in that young boy. Now you know my job is to do as a parent. My job is to get the dross out of their life so that gold can shine. That's my job. My job, listen, they're not mine anyway, they're God's. Yes, sir. My job is to somehow pull out that dross that is in their heart so that the gold that is inside of them can shine for Jesus Christ their entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give you several statements about the word training, then we'll pack our bags. Oh. Statement number one, don't get too excited though. I, was, I preached till 1030 last week, so we could be here all the time. Hey. Never done that in my entire life till last week. But anyway, and I'm not going to get in the habit of it, so don't worry. But anyway, <laughs> statement, number, statement number one, training takes repetition. Yes, sir. Training takes repetition. I want you to get this. Training takes repetition. Are you getting it? Training takes repetition. Yes. Just making sure you're awake out there. <laughs> you ever figure this out? What do you, what, what, how do you learn in school? What do they do in school? They repeat, repeat. You could cut out two-thirds of the year. Are you in favor of that, young people? Yes. So help me out. If we didn't repeat one thing. That's right. Because most of the school year, you have the teacher teaches you the principle, and then they what? Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And you're sitting there saying, this is boring, but you're learning it. Yeah, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yeah, come on. Listen to me. Likewise with children, you've got to understand, you've got to train them by repetition. Let me illustrate. When my daughter was young, my pastor was Brother Hiles, and I heard how his mama had had um, had done some things with him, so I figured, well, if it worked right for him, it's going to work for my daughter. So I went down to the store, I bought a magazine, and I ripped out the beer advertisement inside the magazine, I brought it home, and I came, and I brought my daughter down to the downstairs of, my, of our duplex, and, I, and we're down there, I said, Katie, come here. She was just a young little girl. And so I, I showed her the picture of the beer. And I said, Caitlin, this is beer. Say it. She goes, beer. I said, beer's bad. Beer's bad. Say it. She goes, beer bad. Beer bad. I said, say it again. Beer bad. Beer bad. I said, beer's bad. Beer's bad. Really bad. I said, say it. She goes, beer bad. Beer bad. Beer bad. I got that paper. That paper. I put it on the ground. I began to jump up and down. I said, beer's bad. Beer's bad. Beer's bad. Beer's bad. I said, now, Caitlin, you come do the same thing. She went over there. Beer bad. Beer bad. Beer bad. Beer bad. I said, it's exactly right. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Well, yes, sir. I've had an advertisement for cigarettes. Yep. I ripped it out of the magazine. I paid for the magazine, of course, but, uh, but, uh, but I, I ripped it out of the magazine. I brought it home, and I sent my daughter down. I said, Caden, you see this? Cigarettes. I said, cigarettes, bad. Cigarettes, bad. Cigarettes, bad. I said, Caden, say it. She goes, that's bad. Red's bad. Red's bad. I put that on the ground. I begin to jump up and down. I said, Caden, cigarette's bad. Cigarette's bad. Cigarette's bad. Cigarette's bad. I said, now say it. She went over there. She goes, red's bad. Red's bad. Red's bad. Red's bad. Yeah. Right. You say, oh, that's brainwashing. The world does it. Yeah. Come on now. I'm tired of people criticizing us for the exact same. Listen, the world um, criticizes for our brainwashers for wrong. I'm trying to brainwash them in the way of God. We were in a store. We're at the cash register. Children never know when to say things and when not to say things. <laughs> We're in the store, and this guy pulls out a pack of cigarettes. Uh, uh, what do you call the, the big box? Um, carton. Carton of cigarette, or not, uh, not a carton, uh, a carton of, of beer. I mean, we're talking big one. He pulled it out, set it on the bell. My daughter saw the beer. Her eyes got real big. And all of a sudden, she goes, Daddy, Batman, Batman, Batman. I, he looked at me, I said, wife trainer, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. We were, in, we were in the store about a month later. 
where, where I'm trying to get something on the way home, not even paying attention. All of a sudden, the guy said, ma'am, can you give me a couple packs of cigarettes? She heard the word cigarettes. Oh, 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 sudden her antennas went up, antennas went up, and she began, she began, she looked at the man, she was daddy, devil man, devil man, devil man. <laughs> he said, I bet that was embarrassing. I'd rather her embarrass me than her to get comfortable with sin. Yes, why, listen, why are we letting our children become comfortable with doing wrong? Yeah. Training takes repetition. Yes, sir. And somewhere there's got to be somebody that says, listen, listen, I want to train my daughter to do right by reflex. Yes, right. Yes, yes sir. Man. Good enough. You know, when I drive, I just do things. I don't even think about it. Yeah. And I want my daughter, Brother Templin, to do right, not even have to think about it. Yes, right. Training takes repetition. Yes. Statement number two. We are to train them up. We're to train them up. Notice God says train. What's the next word? Uh -huh. Up a child. He didn't say train them down. He said train them up. Right. Yes, sir. Listen. I'm tired of us criticizing previous generations and saying, oh, they're too hard. Well, mom. Mom. No, they weren't too hard. You look at this old world we're in right now. Look, look, at, look at what we've raised with a generation of people that thought grandpa and grandma were too hard. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Somewhere we need, hey, listen, I don't listen. It does not bother me if my daughters stand for something for right is stronger than mine. And if, if that's the case, then I've done my job. Amen. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, I'm, listen. I, I get fed up with parents. Well, mom and dad were too hard on me, and I'm not going to be that way with my kids. Oh, shut up. Because right. yeah. your mom and dad's training is what made you who you are. Yes, sir. Amen. Getting out there and working hard didn't hurt you. Yep. Yes, sir. Which leads me next to Training starts young. Yeah, yes, right. Training starts young. No. You say, Brother Donnelly, when do you start? When they come out of the womb? Well, yeah. Does not the scripture say they come out of the womb? What? Speaking lies. lies. I mean, out of the womb. Right, yeah. They're a liar. Yeah. <laughs> Never a parent knows that's true. Because yeah. they start crying and nothing's wrong. Come on now. Yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> now listen, I'm not saying that you go broadcast to everybody. Which I, I, think, I think what you're doing is between a husband and wife. I don't think you need to, and I don't think you ought, especially in this world, ought to broadcast it to the whole world. Right. But I am saying that I try that you start with, there you go. I have those, uh, again, I revert back to the, to the two dogs I have. The one dog, I waited, someone, I heard someone say, you wait till they're about eight months old. Then you start training them. That was the most stubborn dog. She still is pretty stubborn. She's a good dog, but she's stubborn. The other dog, second dog I got, I said, you know what? Forget this thing of waiting until they're eight months old. I got her. She's eight weeks old. We're starting now. Yeah. Amen. I was one day, I mean, she had, she wasn't even four months. And I'm walking her down the street, and one of my neighbors said, man, how do you get that dog to be so obedient? At this young of, a, of, a, of an age, I said, you start young. Yes, sir. You start young. Right. Notice, mom and dad, somewhere there's got to be a mom and dad who just de determined, okay, we're going to start that young. He said, well, Brother Dolly, this is, and I know it's not the first time, but you, this is the first time I've heard that. Okay, then start now. Yes, good. Now, you may not be able to fight the whole war at one time, but you can pick a battle and start now. Yes, you will. Somewhere, listen, somewhere you have to start. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. And it's better, listen, it's better, my, my daughter. I, listen, she can tell you, listen, I didn't have to worry, I didn't have a lot of problems. I, to this day, I've not had problems with my daughter. I think a lot of it comes down to this. We started young. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, she may go off the deep end tomorrow. I have no idea. But to this day, 
She has been, I mean, it's like, wow. Her spirit's been good. She's been obedient. She does what we tell her to do. Why? Because we didn't listen. I wasn't going to wait till she had already had the bad habits set in. When they started um, coming out, I said, let's deal with it now. Which leads to the next thing. Take number four. What we train them to do is not a choice. Yes. Yes. What we train them to do is not a choice. God says train up a child in the way he should what? Go. Go. Listen, that's not a choice. That's right. Joshua says, for me and my house, we what? Will, will serve the Lord. He didn't say, hold on a second. Yeah, I got to have a business meeting with my family. I don't know where this business meeting started at. My parents never had one business meeting in our house. Can't figure it out. <laughs> Listen to me. Somewhere, there's got to be a daddy and a mama that say, no, not going to happen. Right. Amen. No. Yes, sir. I don't care if it heralds the whole world. Listen to me, I'm not caring about what the world thinks. Listen to me, I'm caring. Listen, mamas, every once in a while, you need to look at your daughter. She's coming down dressed wrong. You need to say, you need to go back up to that room because you're not going out like that. Amen. Yes, sir, Amen. preacher. Right. That's right. Amen. Somewhere there's got to be, listen, there's got to be somebody that says, listen, this is not a choice. Yes, sir. Come on. Not a choice. Yes, sir. I remember when I was a boy, candy cigarettes had just come out. Uh -oh. Sorry, was a couple weeks ago, we were on vacation, about three weeks ago. Went to Shreveport, Louisiana, to, I forget what they call the place, and, and we, a boardwalk, things what they call it. We went there, and they have this old candy store. And as I walked in, front basket as you walk in, candy cigarettes, but I had flashbacks. Because <laughs> when I was a boy, every, every, we lived in Alabama at the time, and everybody, I mean, everybody was, all the kids in church had candy cigarettes, but one family. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. And I, I remember I, I go to my mom, everybody's just candy. She says, son, we don't play sin in our house. Yeah. Amen. I remember one night, it was it was not the time zone that we're it's not the it's not the um the time what do you call it zone that we're in right now is the one when it gets dark early and uh, and um, daylight is no longer daylight savings time which was daylight saving or the time what eastern time that we were on central time and we were at church it was after church no it was before church before church we're at church out in the parking lot with my buddy it was dark outside my buddy said to me he says hey Alan would you like a candy cigarette I looked left. I looked right. I looked forward. I looked back. I looked everywhere. Mamas, I don't know how you do this. And I said I did not see my mom anywhere. And all I said, sir, he gave me a candy cigarette. I took one bite. One bite. Next thing I know, I have a hand going across the back of my head, grabbing me by the ear and dragging me into the church. You say, well, it happened. None of your cotton picking business. Yeah. <laughs> he said, it's crazy. No, no, listen to me. Mama and Daddy were adamant about, listen, it's not a choice about how, what we're going to do inside the house. Right, right. Not a choice. Which leads to the next thing. The best training is hands-on training. Right. Right. Yeah. Notice. Train up a child where? In the way he should go. In other words, if I'm going to train them in that way, get this now, I've got to be there. Yes. If I'm going to train my children to be faithful to church, guess what? I need to be what? Faithful to church. Faithful to church. If I'm going to train my children to read my Bible, read the Bible, guess what I've got to do? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Yes, if I'm going to train my children to pray, then I've got to pray. pray. If I'm going to train my child to be a soul winner, then I've got to be a soul winner. If I'm going to train my child to dress right, then I have to 
dress right. If I want to train my child um, 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 to listen to the right music, then I've got to listen to the right music. If I want to train my children to hit the off button on the television, Amen. then I've got to hit the off button on the television. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is not what it's like. Listen, if I want to train my daughter how to stand, then I stand. Yes, sir. Right. All too often, we don't understand as we're walking through life, we are in the way. Yes, sir. And our children are following us. Yes, sir. Right. Mark my word. But now let me go another step. Let me talk to Grandpa and Grandma. <laughs> Grandpa and Grandma, you are not done rearing your children. Listen to me. You're training your adult children how to grow old yes. and still serve the Lord. Yeah. I hope. Listen, I am fed up with watching. Listen, I understand you don't have the energy you once used to have. But old age is not an excuse to sit down and do nothing for the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen, brother Donald. Amen. You're preaching right now. I am. I'm going to step further. I, I, I'm fed up with this mentality that, well, let's... Um, Let's, you know, I'm a grandparent. I can spoil my grandkids. Show that to me in the scriptures. Yes, sir. You know what you're doing, Grandpa and Grandma, when you're training your, your, when your grandchildren come over and you let them get away with things that mom and dad wouldn't let them get away with? You're training them that mom and dad are too stringent and that we're the good people. This is where I lose the people. Yes, sir. The children ought to be able to go over to grandpa and grandma's and have the same code of conduct at grandpa and grandma's that they have at home. Yes, sir. Because how many of us have said, man, I never got away with that when I was a kid. Yep. Well, come on. And you hated it. So why are you doing it? Oh. Amen, Brother Don. Yeah. 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 Well, you listen to me. Somewhere, we as God's people have better wise up. We've got a generation that needs to be trained for the Lord. And I'm talking whether it's in our junior church, whether it's in our youth department, whether it's in the home, whether, I don't care where it is. We have got, listen, they've got some gold in them. Our job is to mine it out. That's right. Yeah. Get it out of there. Amen. I'll give you another story and I'll be done. I'll probably give you another one and be done again. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And I, I don't see any problems in this church, but with this, but I remember when I was a boy, you know, my, my parents used to threaten me with death when I went public. And they said, if you embarrass us, you'll get a spanking when you get home. Uh -oh. I know I hear people say, oh, you shouldn't do that. Why not? Yeah, well, come on. So have you ever been in public? <laughs> come on now. Yeah. You're at a restaurant, and there's this kid just disturbing the whole restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, right there. And you're sitting there, it's like, you know, and everybody's uptight. Everybody. Because yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of other parents out there saying, man, I, I, can, I can help you. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, and then they start going as one, <laughs> two, two and a half, two and three quarters. Two and seven eights, hurry up and get right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I never got the one. <laughs> My parents didn't know how to count. Yeah. 
When we went to church, this is when we went to church. Right. I sat in the front row. My mom played the piano right here. I sat over here by my mama. I didn't sleep in church. Well, I didn't draw in church. Amen. I sat and listened in church. Well, and if I started dozing, my mom would take her two fingers and pinch the inside of your thigh. Oh, my yes, word. <laughs> Stayed awake. Yes, sir. Stayed awake. Why? Because church, hey, hey, you say, well, well, but they're getting something from the word, you know, even though they're sleeping. Oh, hogwash. They don't fall asleep with the with the cartoons. They ought not to fall asleep with the most important book. That's going to change their life. Amen. Yes, sir. You say, boy, I'm not it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not your kid. I bet so. <laughs> well, it's how they act in public. It's only. A part of how they act at the house. Yes, right. mm -hmm. And your children are going to try you in public, mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Mama, and when your child tries you at the grocery store, you leave that cart there, you grab all of your kids, you walk out, and you go home, and you take care of business at home. Amen. He said, but the cart, leave it there, they'll put it back up. Yes, sir. Right. But they need to understand. It don't matter where we are. Yes, sir. Amen. Good. Yes, sir. We're not going to put up with this. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, good. This mess of our country that we're going through right now, all these people going on these riots and everything. Oh. Buddy, if I'd have ever thought about that. Huh. Come on. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to be political, but I, I, I'd have never been. Listen, I don't know if I'd be alive if I ever did that. Thank God for that mama over in Baltimore that saw her grown son out there trying to act like an idiot. And mama went out there and said, son, grab him. A grown son bigger than him than her. Grab him and said, you're not doing that. Well, come on. Good. My question is, where's dad? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Parenting will embarrass you. It's inconvenient. But you'll have a lot of joy. In years to come, if you do it right. right. Train up a child. Entice them. Trace that way. Mine out that goal. Direct them when they're old. They're not departing. They may walk out of here and say, I'm not going to serve the Lord, but I promise you this. Every night and every day that they live, it will gnaw them inside the heart. Don't That's believe right. me? Ask the Father of the Son. Yes, he thought he could prove daddy wrong and eventually while he's there in the hog pit he came to himself yes, right. Right. and why? because every night while he's out there partying and living it up mom and daddy's training mm -hmm. kept on coming back Yes, sir. That's right. father tonight I don't know why you had me teach this <laughs> But Lord, I believe with my heart that, and this is a good church, and I don't think we have problems with this, but a reminder is always good. And all of us have to understand we're still training people. I mean, this is not the time to let up. We've got to be consistent in thy word. God, help us, please. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one's looking. I wonder who's in here tonight. You say, preacher, I'm saved. I know I'm saved, but I need that reminder tonight. There's some things I just, I, 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 want, to, I, want, I want God's help to make sure I'm doing these things right. Preacher, God spoke to my heart. Pray for me. If you like it, we just lift your hand way up high. I see hands all over. God bless you. Put them down. Who else is it? Say, preacher, there's some things in my life. If there's, a, if there's someone in the church, if I'm in, in a ministry in the church, I want those children to see these things that are right in my life. And preacher, pray for me. I needed that reminder tonight. So someone else, I see that hand. And this one, and this one, and this one. Who else is it? And that one back there, someone else. Anyone else? And this one over here, and this one right here. Ask one last question. I wonder if you died tonight. You said, preacher, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven, brother. Donald, pray for me. I'm not sure that I'm saved. Is there anyone like that? I'm not sure if I die right now, my next breath, and then have anyone like that. In just a moment, I'm going to pray. As soon as I'm done praying, we're going to stand to our feet, heads will be bowed, eyes will be closed, I'll point to the penis. She'll begin to play. As she begins to play, if God spoke to your heart, 
I want you to leave your seat, go to the nearest aisle, come down the front, go down to this altar. Why don't you commit with God tonight to say, God, let me be that trainer of the next generation that you would be pleased with. Father, you know the needs. You know the hearts that you spoke to. God, help us all to do our part. In those areas where maybe we've let up just a bit, may we get back to what, doing what you want us to do. So that the next generation has some hope. Bless his invitation is only you cannot ask in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Everyone standing to their feet. No one's looking around right now. The kids. Nick, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Yes, sir. Amen. I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Spirit, and baptism. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been done, the Lord commanded, and yet there's still room. Amen. Amen.